my name's Ishmael and um, my question is, have you ever faced discrimination and how did it make you feel? Yeah, it's uh, not an easy topic, I think like everybody knows and yeah, uh, I'm a person of color and uh, grown up in Germany so unfortunately I had to face in my youth and uh, yeah, there's something like anger, sadness and uh, there's no proper reason for this. Uh, my name is Osvaldo and my question is um, why do football players take the knee and how do you feel about it? I think uh, this is a sign of awareness that there's still a big problem with racism. It's uh, to make the people look, yeah, there's still a problem. Uh, we are not finished, uh, it's still there and uh, we have to take care of it. What do you think? What do you think if you see it on the pitch? I think it's a good sign of awareness. Yeah. Uh, at the start, I think, because I didn't even know what it was at first before. Like, I was, so it gets people thinking like, oh, what is this? Which is a good thing. It shows signs of togetherness basically between the Premier League players. Shows that if one player is getting discriminated, um, we're all going to stand with that player. Um, I just feel like the knee shows to the fans and all of them that football players don't allow like racial abuse and that they care for the ones that go through it. Hello Joe, my name is Julio and my question is, what advice would you give for people who have been discriminated against? It's not always easy to react in this situation, but uh, you always uh, get to somebody you can trust to get some help if you cannot deal the situation by yourself. But uh, to get a person you can trust, is it a teacher or parents or some help or some friends? Because uh, to deal on your own with things like this, it's really hard and tough. How would you keep composure if you've seen that situation? To stay calm is like a to get the max effort to change something, I think, in the situation and speak uh, afterwards. But you have to speak afterwards. You cannot be quiet afterwards, so you have to speak afterwards loud and uh, say what the problem is and uh, who did it. Do you know how you would react if your friend gets like uh, in a situation like this? I would just advise my friend, just leave it, just stay away. But uh, at the same time, I would report him, but. I will also tell my friend just not to take like action by doing something that he would regret. Take away like from the crowd and stuff. My friend yeah, that was racially abused. Like calm him down and stuff. Yeah, that would be the best way. I would obviously keep composure. Try not to get involved too much, but let him know obviously that, you know, what he's done isn't good. And if he knows what he's done isn't good, but regrets it himself, then I'll just be like, okay then. It's, it's just a matter of thing where if you can educate one person, maybe that person can educate another person and then that train goes on and on and on. That really sounds wonderful. It's like a way to handle things uh, that would be really great. Um, so basically a couple of months back, my friend, he was on the Patriot plane and he had like, he put in the, say a bad tackle into this kid and then this kid basic, basically racially abused him. My, my mate, he didn't really want to carry on because the emotions were high and they didn't know how to react, so we ended up crying. So as a team, we all decided that we wanted to not play and walk off the pitch together and the, the match didn't resume. So that's how I had to support my, my friend. Yeah, but this is great how you react. Just support your mate and uh, not get uh, aggressive or get in direct conflict, but uh, to set a sign to say it's not okay to continue like this, to make change. <laughs>